Hello there. Well, I just recently got home. And I figured I would uh, make you a video from my house. Actually, here's my house. And uh, talking about the King James Bible and the uh, modern versions. Um, brothers and sisters in the Lord, there are quite a few of them that are saved, one or so, and definitely on the King James side. So, um, I ran into some scripture. I was reading my Bible earlier at work, you know, and um, read it in between times um, at work. It's, um, I've been out of the five or six years that I've had the King James Version, about five and a half years that I've been reading the King James Version, I've read it that many times, about six times all the way through. Well, this is my sixth time now, and I've really been blessed by it. The first time I read it NLT all the way through, and that didn't bless me as much. So, anyway, I wanted to share this with you. And the scripture goes like this. Um, let's see here. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followed not with us. See there, he said he followed not with us. He didn't say he didn't follow us. He said he followed not with us. He wasn't in the group. And I want you to keep in mind, too, that Jesus sent out the 12 in chapter 9. Um, he just sent out the 12 disciples. And in chapter 10, he sends out 70 others that he appointed. And uh, disciples come back, and they go to a private place. And then the 12, when he sent them out and everything, and then they came back and tell them about the rebuking of the devils and stuff like that. And the joy that they had and all that stuff and the, the, the devils heard them he said you know be um jesus said that um um you know be glad that you go that your names are in heaven not so much that you can cast out devils things like that but anyway the thing i'm trying to get at is here is i guess is that um even though some people have an authorized version and other people have um uh, modern versions um, a great example of this is what a brother from an island down in next to Madagascar was telling me. And it said um, they were getting modern versions. And that's all they ever got. And he came to the realization that the King James Version Bible is the true Word of God. It is the truth. There's no errant, errant I mean, there's no fallacies in it. It's inerrant. And some, most, a lot of Christians can't believe that. God's Word is not exactly that. It will have some errancies in it, you know, errors in it rather, and they can't believe uh, with the whole heart that God can make a word, a Bible, and keep it in there. And He can, and He did. Um, but anyway, gotta help a little bit. Um, God can and did do that. If he can keep one, if he can keep this world stable, if he can keep it from falling apart, surely he can give us a Bible that's not full of errors or has a little bit of errors. And just because we can't understand it doesn't mean it has errors. Um, we understand God's word by the Holy Spirit, not um, by our own devices, not by our own education, so-called, our own Bible colleges and Bible um, um, seminary. We don't need any of that stuff. We don't need the Hebrew. We don't need the Greek. The Hebrew and the Greek, it's obsolete. We got the English now. You know, they can study all those words. This word means this. And you, um, what do you call it? Um, oh, man. That word, that word, that word. <laughs> oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It, it just gets ridiculous how many, you know, um, something other name of the year, whatever you call it. Um, anyway, uh, well, I forgot what the word of it was. Anyway, they just it just causes so much confusion, it causes so much, um, um, 
this word means this and also means that and also means this and also means that like a god like love agape philo and all this other stuff while most of the time it's i'm um, talking about agape love i mean the, the true love of god the, the love between a person for his child and stuff like that a, a real intense love and um and how the greeks were always trying to gauge love meaning this love means that love means this love means that it's on the tip of my tongue that certain word but anyway there are a lot of christian brothers and sisters out there that are truly and wonderfully miraculously saved and they are part of the body of jesus christ but they have a bible that um that really confuses them and some of them won't admit it so therefore they're going to say the king james version bible is this and that and the other it's it's not you know there's there's too many errors in it and everything else but it's got kind of archaic words, but yet when you look at the, all these other Bible versions, they have those so-called archaic words in them too. But really, the, the words that the Bible has, the authorized version of the Bible has, does not have archaic words. They're words that you use every single day. That maybe you don't do it all. I mean, well, people are changing their own language. and you know, People talk all kind of weird ways now, you know. And uh, it's a decision that they make. It's not a decision that God made for them. It's a decision that they make, and God is letting them. The Bible that we have in the authorized version, the King James Bible, is a perfect English language. It's a God. It's God's language in the English. That's what it is. And it, um, it developed over time. It developed from the Anglo-Saxon. It developed from the pre-modern English, the modern English, into what we have today. Well, the modern before, the pre-modern, which is, you know, post. You know, anyway. <laughs> okay. Let me just stop. I'm going to confuse you before I confuse me, right? Okay. So, I'm going to read this to you here in Luke chapter 9, verse 49. And it says, And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followed not with us. He didn't say he didn't follow us. He said, follow not with us. See what I'm saying? Does not mean that he was not saved. Because as you see early on in chapter 9, that Jesus sent out the 12 apostles, well, 12 disciples, which became apostles, and that was their, the message they were given, they were apostles. And, um, you know, they came later back with him, and they went to a place privately. And then later on in chapter 10, Jesus sends out the 12, um, not the 12, but the 70 that he appointed. And they came back and talking about all this joyous things of how they cast devils out and that the devils heeded the name of the Lord. And he said, that's not such a big deal. In other words, what's, what's the big deal is that your names are written in heaven. Casting out devils is not a big deal. You know what I mean? And um, let's see here. That's what it says in um, verse 20 of chapter 10. It says, notwithstanding in his, and this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. But anyway, what I was trying to get out of here, get at here, is um, the people who followed, um, the, the guy that didn't follow with them, with the disciples. And uh, Jesus said unto them, unto him, forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. So see, there are a lot of Christians out there who read an authorized version. There are a lot of Christians out there who read the um, modern translations, or, or one of the modern translations, but they're saved. And they're wonderfully, gloriously, and miraculously saved. But one who has the Word of God, the true Word of God, then there's another one who doesn't. Then there might be someone in between who has both, and it goes in between all versions, modern versions. But it, it's, it's kind of... Um, it's kind of obvious though the most the Bible with the most um, controversy is going to be the one that hardly people people hardly have and the one that's going to be the most widely accepted are the ones that don't have the complete truth in it now that's not to say that, like I said that person's not saved that's not to say that person um, is uh, um, going to go to hell or whatever you know but most Christians are deceived because they deceive what a man says, not what God says. 
That doesn't mean they're not saved. It just this means that it's a continuous cycle of they're not listening to what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell them. You know, he's being patient with them. He's being kind with them. He's trying to let them know that his word isn't about um, uh, what man has to say. His word is about what's in truth, what's in spirit. And if you if they ever ever compare the authorized version and the to a modern translation, some of it might say a lot of the same thing. But there's a lot of there's a, some uh, more of it that won't say the same thing. It's like the Ten Commandments: you break one law, you break them all. It's the same thing. If you hate your neighbor, you break all the commandment. If you commit adultery with your a neighbor or your neighbor's wife, then you break all of them. You break the love of your neighbor, you break the love of God. How can you love God and how can you love your neighbor if you go against your neighbor? Because if you go against your neighbor, you're going against God. That's the same thing with God's word. If you lie in one aspect of God's word, you lie in everything. If you say that Jesus says Jesus John seven seven, that's a perfect example. Um, Jesus says, I go not yet up into the feast. I have one in, in King James Version. Actually, we'll go right there in just a second and look at it. Um, and the other one says, says, I go not up to the feast. And some of the other versions, not all of them. Probably not King, New King James Version. But um, if you say that, and, and, and to make Jesus out of a liar, that he's not going to go because of what the law says, and he's God in the flesh, and... That's fine on one ver Bible version, but you get another Bible version and you agree with it because you agree with another one. Then you say, well, it says here, go go not yet up. And this one says, I go not to the feast. Okay, but they all have the Word of God. How can they be the Word of God if they're lying? If one of them, out of, if you have ten Bible translations and three or four of them lie, and you got one of them that tells the truth all the time in every aspect, and you don't want to realize, you don't want to go with that because you're not using the Holy Spirit to help you, but you're just going by what man says. If you have a stack of Bibles that are modern translations and New Age Bibles, as opposed to this King James Version Bible, which never lies, and you're just going to have to take my word for it because the Holy Spirit says so. You know, if you if you open your mind and heart to it, I mean, you find it for yourself. It's just not something you're going to pick up just like that. Some people will and can, but others won't. But I'm saying, if you stack all these Bibles against what the authorized version says, <laughs> you know what's going to come out on top? The authorized version. But again, too, that does not mean that person is not saved, but they seem to be more argumentative in some cases. I mean, a person who with a King James Version Bible can be argumentative too. We are all sin, we've all fall short of the glory of God. We all make mistakes. You know, we're all going to screw up. You know, and uh, we all have our own personalities, even though we are saved. But I, I, I believe with all my heart that if, um, if we have God, if you think you have God's true word, whether it's the authorized version, or whether it's the modern translations, plus the authorized version, then you need to pray and ask the Lord to help you understand. You need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come in and show you the truth. Because if you're going by what the ESV says, and then the ENIV and the NLT, one of them says one thing, another says another, you know. And then the you, you go also go by the King James every now and then, then you flip through the, you know. Some people got the Bible versions that are all in one, this big old book. It has an ESV, NLT, NIV, and all the rest of New Message Bible, um, the MEV, whatever, this new one. And they're like, oh, it says it's here, but there's no consistency. Say, so like, if you were in a church, and one person had one hymnal, and you had another hymnal. It had the same song, uh, uh, well, not the same song, it may be on page 384. It has, just as I am. Okay, you go to your hymnal and you turn to page 384. It's not there. How, how can you sing in unison? How can you sing in, um, together as one voice? Give God the glory, you know, and praise that he, he deserves when you go to church to worship. And if what if you start singing the, the song on that page that the other person doesn't have on that same exact page? You think you're going to sound real good? 
You think that church is going to sound great? No, it's going to sound like a lot of confusion. Everybody can sing it off a key, off out of note and everything. It's going to be chaos. That's the same thing with the authorized version Bible as opposed to modern versions. That doesn't mean the person's not saved. And if I ever said that, um, I sure didn't mean to say that, but I don't think I've ever said that. That does not mean the person, that does not mean that person is not saved. It just means that person has a different viewpoint, has a different Bible. And the Holy Spirit is continually working on that person. But thank God there's been a, um, a, a, a move, a wave at least, um, a, a lot of people going to the King James Version Bible. By everybody here that I've ever met in East Tennessee has had the authorized version Bible. Amazing. Um, but you go to Walmart, <laughs> you won't hardly find a King James Version Bible. It's not because people are buying them up, and if they are buying them up, is is they and you know well that could go turn around the other way. There's a lot of perverted um, Bibles out there. The NIV, and that's the perverted Bible. I'm sorry, I know some of you might not agree, but it is. It's just a perverted Bible, and the rest of them aren't all that great. But anyway, I did say we were going to John seven seven, right? But anyway, um, there are a lot of them out there that don't have the truth in it that contradict they even contradict themselves the, the other Bible versions do you have what I'm saying is themselves uh, you have an NLT NIV ESV NCV and you read them some of them can say the same thing in one thing and then another thing and they contradict one might say one thing and another might say another they contradict one another and you got uh, most people have uh, three or four different versions. Um, uh, not in the King James version. Only it's like well, I don't want to call myself only people who don't have just the King James version Bible will have several versions, and they go by all of them. They say this is the Word of God. ESV, NLT, e, you know, MIV, whatever. This is the Word of God. Huh? No, that's a. How can one translation be God's word, another one that doesn't say the same thing be God's word. It can't. No, it doesn't make sense. Um, but that person might have a, a zeal for God. He loves the Lord. He prays maybe more than I do. And he, he gets down on his knees maybe more than I do. He talks to the Lord more, maybe more than I do. And I wouldn't doubt it. But yet, he's got a Bible translation, a Bible translation that and several of them disagree with one another. And it doesn't realize, he doesn't realize, or he or she doesn't realize, there's one that's been out there way longer than all the rest of them have. And it's this one right here. Oh, it was, um, yeah, it was, uh, what did they say? It was, um, revised. No, it wasn't. It was never revised. It was the typology that was changed. It was a one word um, that looked like an S or F. It was changed into the proper letter. It was a proper spelling, a proper syntax, a proper, um, uh, 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 what is that word? Um, anyway, oh, that was the word I was talking about. In other words, uh, that was ambiguous. Ambiguous. All these other Bible versions are ambiguous. They say too many same things, and the same thing is it's the same thing. You know, one word means this uh, 10 or 12 times over. And if you can say it this way, you can say it that way. It's ambiguous. So all these other Bible versions are just that. They're ambiguous. They say this and they say that. Should be translated this way. Should be translated that way. When you got the pure, simple English right here, you don't need a Greek. You don't need a Hebrew. God made a way for your mouth which speaks English to read something out loud that looks like English. This is it. He done did it. God done did it. He did it for you and me. Uh, what is the most prominent language in the world today? English. You think God can't make a Bible out from the Greek and Hebrew? I mean, those languages are gone and dead. As far as Hebrew, the Hebrew is still there. Yeah, we got Hebrew. People speak Hebrew. They speak, um, um, you know, Hebrew in uh, Israel. But God took it uh, down a different route. The Lord took it down another route. 
he put it in a Gentile language, a Gentile language that was all over the earth. And that, of course, as, as we know it, started from England. That the, on England, the, the, the uh, sun never set on England. No, the sun never rise and never set. The British Empire. And now we are descendants from them. We came to this country in the early 1600s. And we settled, made a continent called the United States. Of, I mean, it made a, um, uh, colonies. And it became the United States of America. And we're the, we're the melting pot. All countries combined to make this country. And we speak English. We speak English. We don't speak Hebrew. And we don't speak when they did Greek. And we're not amb and we shouldn't be ambiguous. God says what he says. He means what he means. And if we don't understand what he's saying, then all we have to do is pray to the Holy Spirit and he'll help us understand. But at the same time, I want you to know and everybody else out there to know that just because I don't read the same Bibles you do, my brothers and sisters in the Lord who have like these other Bible versions, does not mean, and I will never ever say that you're not saved. Because there are a lot of people out there, especially listening on the Moody Radio and things like that, and a lot of other Bible stations that read another Bible. But uh, and, but yet they're saved. They call on to the Lord, they pray to Him, they have faith in Him and everything else. That's not to say that they are not saved. That would be wrong for somebody to say that. You know? But um, anyway, I'm a kind of simple person. I like to make things simple. I don't believe in seminary. I don't believe in Bible college. I don't need a man to teach me God's word. I need the Holy Spirit to teach me John four fourteen twenty six. And I did say we were gonna go to John seven seven, didn't we? I keep on forgetting that. Okay. Hmm. Well, was it John seven eight? Yeah, John seven eight. John seven eight, this is what the Bible says here. Okay, now another Bible version might say something else. Go ye up into the feast, I go not up yet unto this feast for my time is not yet full come some other bible versions take yet out and make jesus look like a liar they make him a liar because they mistranslate it and that's the problem what the translators to the readers did i mean translator did was good enough it's not that it's king james that did anything about it it's just named after him Okay, the translators, um, the God appointed through King James, um, did a good job. They made something better out of what they had with the Geneva Bible, um, with the Bishop's Bible, the Tavner's Bible, uh, Wycliffe and Tyndall and everything else. It all culminated into what we have today. It reached the apex as what we have in an authorized King James Bible, or authorized version 1611. Now, yes, there were some mispronunciations in 1611, and then it got Romanized fought in 1612, and it got standardized in the 1760s. My, um, what was that dude's name? Um, Blaney. Um, there was nothing yet to be revised that was all edited to have the words flow smoothly, the syntax flow smoothly. But look, when you get into another Bible version, when you get into the MEV, when you get into the NCV, that, that word ambiguous pops right back up because it's nothing but Greek. They they take the Texas receptors only and they're working out everything they can. That's, that's what West Cotton Hort was trying to do. You know, they didn't like America, they hated America, you know? So, I mean, they, you know, and they're going to do all they can to vindict, you know, from what I understand, they were pretty vindictive, you know, uh, the, reading their, bio, I mean, the autobiographies and stuff like that, you know, biography, what do you call it? It seems to me, uh, the, the things they said uh, were anti, were anti-American, were, um, a good bit of the time were, um, just more communist, socialist type of views that they had. And um, maybe they were getting men to their wives or something like that, their children, but their ideals, what they had, were they were just anti-American um, Republicanism, or if that's the, if that's the word. Um, they weren't, as Donald Trump says, making America great. 
okay, even again. Uh, they they had nothing to do with that. They they wanted to see this country crumble and fall. Um, they or they they just had uh, angst against it. It's kind of um sad, really. And they were going to make a Bible, which um, you know, would um keep Americans ignorant. And God said, no, it's not working that way. The Bible that I gave through the translators through the Forty some odd, seven some odd men, and sixteen in the sixteen hundreds. That's the one. That is that. That is that which he intended to have for us. Okay, that is the Bible that we should have today. And just because you don't like the old English, the these and the thous and the and all thine and all that stuff, does not mean that it doesn't have a purpose. Everything of God's word, first, second, and third person, or whatever you want to call it has a purpose. God's English and the Bible and the authorized version has a purpose. It is the authorized version 1611. It also is the authorized version 1769. It's the same thing. Whether it's Cambridge edition, some people want to argue about the the pure purified editions and Oxford editions. I don't know totally it's some like one word might say flieth instead of fleeth. Really though that's not so much of a big deal as what the whole Bible says, I don't think, you know. I don't. I haven't really looked into it that much, you know. But at least it doesn't say, I go not yet up into the feast. And oh, and the, uh, like uh, Oxford might say the same thing. I go not yet up into the feast. The camera says, I go not yet up into the feast. But you get into a, I mean, to a um, MEV or NLT or whatever, I go not to this feast. I'm not going to the feast. I don't think I'm going to go to the feast. Message Bible might say something totally different. NIV might say something totally different. But yet some people, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I love you with all my heart. You are Christians out there who go with modern versions. You know you're saved. You call on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith. And Jesus Christ for what he's done for you on the cross. Great. But when you get that modern version, you start doubting God's word. Because... You have another Bible version on top of that, another Bible version on top of that. Then you say that's God's word. How can it be God's word if it's contradicting? How can it be? I mean, answer me that. But yet, you compare the authorized version. Thompson Chain Reference Bible, whatever you want to call it, um, Church Bible Publisher Bible, uh, Cambridge Type Edition, whichever, it doesn't matter. I mean, even it's Oxford. You compare it to um, those Bibles that you have. One on one, or one on one verses twelve or thirteen. I don't know how many translations you have, and you will find and see by the Holy Spirit if you are saved by grace by Jesus Christ down on the cross for your sin. You ask Him, help Him to help you understand. And he will. You just ask Him. You want to know the truth? Ask God for the truth. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. He will help you understand and point it out to you which Bible is true and you'll see that um, 100% of the time if you wait I mean sometimes it's not going to happen like that he's going to work you through it he's going to work things over you with you you know he's going to let you stumble he's going to let you say well I can't believe that he's going to let you say well this and that person was right my pastor's correct and this and this and that person's right and, and it's going to override what he's told you and he's going to let you do that for a while. He's going to let you say those kind of things. Until finally, when you get it, when it clicks in your head, Oh, God is right. Oh, the Holy Spirit told me the truth. Oh, he's my teacher. John fourteen twenty six. Let's just go to that real quick. I'm going to hurry up. It's 30 minutes into this video. And I'm sure my son is like, where's my dad? John fourteen twenty six. But the comforter who would... Uh, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He's the teacher. Okay? Whew. But anyway, there we go. It's not to say that brother or sister in the Lord, they're not saved. It's just to say that they have the wrong words, unfortunately. And everybody's got an attitude about everything. Unsaved, saved. 
Uh, those who have different Bible versions, those who have King James Version, we all you just have to forgive one another, love one another, be in one accord, have the same words to sing to the Lord God our Savior. Um, and, you know, the same Bible, in other words, one heart, one mind, one accord. That's why Paul said it so many times, Peter and Paul and the rest of them, they said it's that being a one heart, one mind, one accord, and James, all the rest of them. You know, singing God's praises together through his word. Not with different hymnals. And in this case, not with different Bibles. Being in one mind, one accord. But the world doesn't want you to know that, right? right? They, they want you to have different Bibles. It causes confusion. That's what Satan wants. It causes confusion. So you won't get to know the Lord properly. And if you do get to know him properly, that you won't worship with others in one mind, one accord, and one thought. Being together in unity. That's what the Bible calls for. That's all I got to say about that. I'm out. Okay. God bless you. See you later.